Hi everybody, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to show you how to properly remove a flywheel. And today I'll be doing this on these chainsaws here. The same principle will apply to most two cycle equipment and also four cycle equipment. So the first thing you want to do is remove the recoil. Usually they're small screws, either Torx or Phillips. If you're doing it on steel equipment, you're going to have T27 Torx screws. And also remove the covers to access the spark plug. And make sure the spark plug is removed from your equipment. And now what you'll need is a piston stop like this. There are short ones, longer ones. Just find out which one is better for what you're doing. And today I'll be using this one here. So just screw it in there. And this is a 14 millimeter threaded piston stop, by the way. And you want to thread it in far enough for the piston to be able to stop. Now another option that you have if you're afraid to damage your piston with a metal piston stop is you can use a nylon rope. What I usually do is I insert it into the cylinder, but make sure that your piston is above the exhaust port and the other ports on your cylinder because the rope may get caught between the piston and the ports and you may end up shredding the rope and it's going to be stuck in your cylinder. So if you use this method, just be extremely cautious. And now what you want to do is turn the flywheel until you can feel that the piston is locking inside the cylinder. And on most chainsaws, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Once you've got your ratchet on there, just secure it. Give it a good tap. And the nut came off pretty easy. Now you want to resist the urge to use your impact to remove flywheel nuts because you could end up damaging the flywheel itself. A lot of flywheels have the key built into it and sometimes you can damage that. Now at this point here it's the critical part to remove the flywheel and I'll be using this tool here from Steel. What it is is a flywheel removal tool and they're not expensive. And here's the part number 5910-8930801. You can buy this from your Steel dealer. And by the way, it's going to work on a lot of other chainsaws as well. And now what you want to do is screw the tool on the shaft here. So what I do is I turn it by hand as far as I can go. And then I back off a bit. Maybe half a turn or more. Now for the next step, absolutely make sure you're wearing safety glasses. And today I'll be using a brass hammer. You can use a metal hammer as well, but I find the brass hammers are a little bit softer. So now I'm just going to hold up the chainsaw bit off the table a bit. You don't necessarily have to have it off the table, but I find if it's suspended it works better. And now give it a good tap. If it doesn't come off on the first, just give it another one. And I'll give it another one. And now the flywheel has popped off. And it's that simple. With the right tool, you won't damage your shaft over here or the threads. And the flywheel key's in good condition. The flywheel itself is in good condition. And then when you reinstall your flywheel, you just put it back on, put the nut back on. You can leave the piston stop there as well. Get the recommended torque setting for the flywheel nut. Use a torque wrench. So now I've got this pole and chainsaw over here. I could use the flywheel tool over here because it does screw on to the shaft here. So what I'm going to do today is remove this flywheel without using the tool that I used on this chainsaw. And at the same time, I'm going to show you how to do it without damaging the threads on the shaft. To start with, I'll be putting in the piston stop as well in this chainsaw. And I'll make sure it's locking up against it. And I'll just do like I did on the other chainsaw here. And what I'm going to do now is just leave the nut flush with the shaft or just slightly out above the shaft just a bit. And I've also put elastics to keep the paws out of the way of the nut here so I don't damage them. And what I've got here guys is an oil drain plug from another engine. I did cut it off a bit just so that it fits over top the nut here. I'm putting that here to protect the nut and the shaft. And if you did want it to stay in place, you can put a bit of grease in there. It's not necessary to put the grease, but it will help to keep this part here on top of the nut. And for the next step here, make sure you are wearing safety glasses. Now I could probably just hit it without this protector with my brass hammer, but I'm still going to leave the protector because it will protect your nut and the shaft. 
Now I'm going to elevate it, give it a good whack. And the flywheel's loose. And now just finish removing the nut. Pull out the flywheel. Now unlike the other chainsaw, this one here has a built-in flywheel key. That's why I don't recommend removing the nut or tightening up the nut on the flywheel with an impact. And now if you have a close look, you can see there's no damage on the threads of the shaft and none on the nut. And even though I didn't use the puller on the Poland chainsaw here, you can see that I can quite easily screw the nut back on. So there's no damage at all on the threads. And both flywheels in today's video were removed without any damage to them as well. So these tools here guys are a must have in your shop as well as the brass hammer. Remember always wear safety glasses when you remove flywheels. You just never know what can come flying and hit you right in the eyes. And if you don't have the tools I just showed you, you can always use the good old trusted nylon rope in your cylinder. However, if you do use the rope to stop the piston from moving, you want to make sure it doesn't get caught between the piston and the ports in your cylinder. So thanks again for watching guys. Make sure you're subscribed and that you're following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and have yourselves a great day.